Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna talk about my experience in Launch School's JS-139 assessment. So the Launch School JS-139 assessment is the assessment portion of the final JavaScript section in Launch School's JavaScript track. Now in this video, I'm gonna give you an exact prescription for how to study that nearly guarantees that you can pass this exam with flying colors. And I'm also gonna give you a key resource that's gonna help you to do that. But before we get into this video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel so that you're notified when I come out with the next video in this series on Launch School, as well as any of my other videos that'll be coming out in between. Now, real quick, the outline for this video, we're gonna go into a review of what's in the course JS-130, which is the course that the JS-139 assessment is for. We're gonna go into what's different about this assessment compared to some of the other assessments in the course. I'm gonna go into what's different about how I studied and then my results as well as the, the outline of that program you can use to nearly guarantee your success. So let's get right into it. So the review of this course, what's in it? So I just have a quick template outline that I put together. This is a, a very broad overview, so this is not all encompassing, but basically it starts off with teaching you a little bit about writing your own versions of some of JavaScript's higher order functions, some of the array methods that are built into JavaScript. You write your own versions of these just to get a very in-depth, nuanced view of how those functions work and it gives you a little bit of an overview of how you can build these similar types of higher order functions and just use them in your code. So it's just a really good overview of that and solidifies some of your understanding of JavaScript's built-in array methods. Next up are the advanced concepts in JavaScript. So the main parts of this that we cover are hoisting, closures, immediately invoked function expressions, modules, and then a brief introduction to garbage collection in JavaScript. It then moves on to testing using a specific framework that they go over in the course, which I'm not gonna give away here. It goes into packaging code. And then finally, you go into a brief introduction on asynchronous programming in JavaScript and some of how that's used, especially uh, in modern web browsers and related technologies. So what's different about this assessment? Well, the main thing that's different about this assessment is it is longer than previous assessments. This one also asks you to do a practical exercise which requires an in-depth knowledge of the testing framework that they use in this course. So not only do you have about the same amount of multiple choice and questions that require an explanation as you would in all the other assessments, but you also have a practical coding challenge, which is very similar to something you might see in an interview. Um, in this case, it's focused on their testing framework, which, you know, of course, you're probably not gonna see in an interview, but it's similar in that you don't really have any preparation. You're going into it not knowing the type of problem that you're gonna get and you're expected to perform uh, you know, relatively flawlessly and very quickly. So you really have to plan your time in this assessment, which is, is what I'm gonna go into here about how I studied. So the first thing to set yourself up for success, you need to have a plan for how you study. And the key resource that I mentioned in the intro is a book by an author named Cal Newport. You may have heard of him. He's very famous for his book on uh, deep work and another book, So Good They Can't Ignore You. So those are two awesome books, but this specific book by him is called how to be a straight A student. And this is one of Cal Newport's older books, which talks about some of his methods for how to study for technical and non-technical subjects. And more importantly, how to take an exam, an exam where you have a very small amount of time and you have some very technical questions like this coding challenge. And one of the things he goes over that helps uh, and helped me tremendously on this uh, assessment was to, when you're starting an assessment like this, where you have a long period of time, you know, three, four, five hours, you want to go in and read all the questions. Just briefly read through just that enough to get an understanding of what all the questions are so that you understand how to plan your time in a very you know in-depth way and also you know he believes that if you read through all the questions your subconscious mind can be working on those problems while you're actively solving the problems as you go through the test now whether or not this is true i don't know it may be the placebo effect but i found that it always helps but without exception this has always helped me on tests and this is certainly something that helped me to get through this test now to set yourself up for success prior to even getting into the test there are some specific things that you can do to help you study. You know, I've found this throughout my time in launch school and I've started to develop this process I use. It's not guaranteed that this will work as well as, you know, Cal Newport's suggestions. I uh, am no study expert like him, but this has helped me. So what I do is I take a first pass through all the material in these uh, courses and I'm going through as fast as I can while still being able to understand everything I'm reading
and develop my own notes. Now, when I'm taking notes, all I'm trying to do is when I go through the course and I'm reading the material, I try to anticipate what the questions will be on. And I'm not taking a ton of time doing this. I just, every time that I notice something in the material that I think there'll probably be a question on, I just note that, make a note for it in my own reference material, which I can go back to you later. The second thing I do is whenever I take quizzes, anything I'm not clear on, I also add that to my reference notes. So that's the first part and it's a first pass through all the material and it's relatively quick. I'm going through quickly, just making those notes so I can get through to the end and start reviewing the study guide. Now, when I get the study guide, I then basically copy the entire study guide that Launch School provides you for each one of its assessments into a new document. And then I go back through the material from the start and I'm also reading through quickly, but this time, anytime I get to something that's in the study guide, I slow down and make detailed notes of anything I can be on, uh, believe would be on the assessment. So in the second pass, I'm also anticipating what I think can be on the assessment, but based on the study guide, I'm going into extra depth in those topics that are explicitly stated will be covered in the course assessment. So this is the second time I go through. Simply doing that or executing that method in any way, meaning going through quickly and making your own study guide, and then looking at their study guide for the assessment and going through the material again in the context of that study guide. If you just do that one thing, this will help you tremendously on the exam. The second thing is for all the problems. Now, most courses in launch school have a set of challenge exercises that are related to the course material you're doing. And in some cases, there's also a second set of problems that are peripherally related to what you're doing in a certain section of the course. Now, for this section of the course, this was one of those uh, types of sections. There were two sets of problems that covered different parts of the course. I obviously can't go into detail about what those were, but overall, one set of the questions was more to do with the testing framework they introduced, and the other set of questions was more to do with the explicit material that you go through in the main part of the course. So what I did is I made sure that for all the questions that they mentioned will be covered in the exam, in this case, the easy and medium questions, I went through every single one at least twice, once going through and trying to solve it and using some of the hints they provide in the course, and the second time trying to see if I could get through every one on my own and how long that would take me. So by the time I went into the assessment, I had a pretty high level of familiarity with any type of question that would possibly be asked. Now, my overall results and a review of these concepts. So my results, this was the highest uh, assessment score that I got on any of the assessments. And again, I think it was just because on each previous assessment, I had one aspect of this study system that I just mentioned to you that I applied. You know, I might have reviewed, I might have made a copy of their study notes for the review and then gone into depth on those topics, but I didn't do both of those things and I wasn't as thorough with my coverage of the material in the exercise questions that are provided as part of the course. So if you do those three things, going through once and anticipating questions, going through again detailed with the study guide and then making sure you have a high level of familiarity with any of the exercises that are definitely gonna be co covered on the exam, I can nearly guarantee that you will have a much better result than you would have had if you just basically try to go through until you feel like you have a level of familiarity with the material that allow you to pass. So this is what I did. It gave me some clear benchmarks into what I needed to do to prepare. Like I mentioned, I got the highest score I've ever got. So just to review, a great resource for studying in general is Cal Newport's How to Be a Straight A Student. I highly recommend getting that and you know at least doing a brief review of it and making some notes. And then again, you want to go through and make your own study guide anticipating what the questions are gonna be. You wanna take the explicitly prepared study guide by the instructors. You wanna take that and go in depth reviewing all the material that's in that study guide. And then you wanna make sure you've gone through all the exercises that are going to be covered at least two times, I would say at a minimum. If you do those things, you'll have a much higher chance of succeeding on the exam. So that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments below if this was useful for you or if this was just a huge waste of your time. And if you haven't already, make sure to like and hit the subscribe button so that you're notified anytime that I come out with a new video in this series or any other video. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Mm -hmm.